so when did you get to Salt Lake City? Um, two and a half weeks ago on the second. Was it like so, so weird flying? Because it's it like was flying? bizarre because first of all, there was nobody on the air, like nobody was around. Yeah. And like the, I was supposed to be on the 11 a.m. flight out of Miami. And then the night before they canceled all but the first and the last. So I scrambled to get on the 6 a.m. and it wasn't direct. So then I had to get the, the Salt Lake flight from Atlanta. So I went through three airports. So Chris and I had this plan of like, okay, when you get here, you're going to strip down. We're going to wipe the suitcases. You're going to yeah. run in the shower. Like, and we're both, it's been over two weeks. We did our two week quarantine just to be safe and we're fine. Uh, so yeah. how's your year? Like, is it like just totally nutty right now because everything was canceled? Yeah, it was bizarre. Um, you know, we were about, to, we were literally a week away from opening Don Q and then I ended up, we had a week off. We were going to come back and then open the following weekend. And I ended up getting very ill the day before all this went down. So I was at home and then they were like, all right, everybody go home, quarantine, season's canceled. Within like three days, we went from rehearsing to open Don Q to the entire rest of the season is canceled. That's so crazy. So it was bizarre. And I'm just thankful that I had all the YouTube classes and like, I, that's what I've been doing because that's my source of income right now. A lot of people are like, why haven't you done any live classes? It's because I get paid for the YouTube ones. Uh, so that is my, that is my source of income. So I've been just like trying to crank them out and just, yeah. you know doing my best with that but you know I totally took your oh I haven't taken ballet in, in over 10 years and I took your class on my bar set up right yeah, nice <laughs> I would never step foot inside of a ballet studio right now oh. like, it's kind of nice I would have never done this yeah and I love your classes because like I love the combinations it's like simple enough I like felt pretty good about myself I don't yeah. have a giant mirror to like criticize myself I think it's this actually might be a good thing for people right now because it's like you get to kind of focus on your own self without everybody else there you know if you have injuries because I was actually having some Achilles issues by the end of the season like yeah. that's gone away so it's been great it's been yeah. great yeah so. I'm so glad so are you guys like go, like picking up food like what's like your daily life like we go to, we try and go to the grocery store norm no more than like once every week to 10 days and we okay. just like get as much as you know get get the week's worth um Chris has been cooking every night so I'm <laughs> I'm a great um and we you know we're trying to film as much as I can he's teaching online he just finished up a class in the room next door and has one at the end of this hour again so he's like doing a bunch of virtual classes for Valley West Academy yeah um, I've been cranking out the videos and trying to update my old ones because I've been wanting to kind of overhaul my channel for a while doing up, you know thumbnail updates and description updates and stuff and we're just trying to keep busy and trying to keep sane I've been giving myself a bar almost every day and he teaches a conditioning class once a week too online and you know we're we're keeping busy a little bit of animal crossing he's gotten me into animal crossing but <laughs> Send I your, love it. Send me your code. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's talk about your point shoes. Mm -hmm. Bef when you were, before you take a hiatus, mm -hmm. you were in New York, what were you wearing when you were performing? Freeds, exclusively. Um, okay. At that point, it was more, I think 95% of the company was in Freeds. I mean, when you're at SAB, that's the shoes they provide. Um, and then I, I think very, like maybe a, a principal or two would get different shoes, but very, very rarely. It was almost a requirement. Um, but for the balance sheet stuff, I need those like barely their shoes. So I do, I am currently in freeze. Many, many, many ballet masters at Miami were like, you should think about going back to freeze. <laughs> so, yeah. and it helped with the balance sheet stuff. It really did. So. Totally. I mean, just like the roll through in general, I have this story. Like I fitted this girl from San Francisco ballet school years ago she got fitted in freeze and it was like her first pair and this girl was so insanely flexible that mm. like she was like a baby giraffe like could not wear something that's too light like a freed right. like freed was like too light it was too soft this girl could not be supported in it but she had to wear it because of the school that she went to but like years later i saw her in joffrey in chicago and i didn't remember her but like she looked really familiar and she had these like beautiful insanely strong feet wow and i was like oh my gosh like this is so rare to see someone at your age this strong and this supportive in like a super soft shoe mm -hmm. and it's like oh it's because i was like forced into this shoe when i was a kid so it kind of forced her to be stronger the way that um i think the freed glue crumbles it like mm -hmm. pushes you to just 
roll through every muscle in your foot. So like, that was like my testimony of like seeing someone from like before and then like after and seeing how strong they become. So there is like, there is method to this magic. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what maker are you in right now? Or are you like still looking at different makers? I'm still looking at different makers. I currently share shoes with Lauren Fadley, um, who is a nice. principal solos in Miami. She's pregnant, so she's not using her shoes. <laughs> so she was like, you use my shoes until you figure it out. So she wears Maltese Cross. Nice. Um, and wing block because I, it's just both of us. I mean, she's got crazier feet than I do, but I just go through them, you know, when I was at City Valley, I was going through two pair a day sometimes, like, or a pair and act, like for beauty, it was like, you know, three acts, three pairs. Yeah. Um, so I wear the Maltese cross right now and I'm a six double X. Um, I was in a six and a half, but I think that was part of my issue was that in Suffolk because I, they were too big. And so I was just sliding around. So I just went down a length and that fixed everything. So yeah. Do you wear anything under in your in your shoes? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wear the couch pouch. Nice, but you, um, that's it. You like it when it's like thinner? I love it when it's thinner. I cannot wear. I tried so many thicker things, thinking it would help. I can't do it. I can't do it. I know. I tried to hop on all the crazes, but I just am like, paper towels not quite enough, but. I like to break these down big time. And these yeah. are, I, I wash them too every couple of days and that breaks them down. So these are as thin as I can get. You're an eight and a half street shoe size. Mm -hmm. So you're technically a six and a half. Right. So you you probably were in the correct length or like if um, if you were a dancer in training, that's probably what I would have put you in. Mm -hmm. But like most dancers go half a size to a full size down when you start to dance professionally yeah because I was finding that I needed I almost need the six and a half when I'm flat but when I go on point I compress so much that it's like I get a whole size smaller yeah so and I was just sliding around and sinking so that's why I went down and and you know eventually your foot gets used to it but yeah I'm supposed to be a six and a half yeah exactly and it's, yeah. it, it, it's always like the same thing like when I get to a dancer that's like 16 or 17 have been dancing for a long time, they usually always go down a size. And I don't know how, if this is how you feel, but I always tell dancers, remember in the store is the tightest they're ever going to be. Amen. Like they're going to break down. And it's really hard too. When you're like 11, sometimes I see kids that are like growing in a week and it's yeah. like after a week, yeah. they're like a size bigger. I'm like, oh, you actually grew. It's not yeah. swollen or anything. Like you really grew in a week. This is crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you customizing your freeds at all? Like when Not yet. Yeah, I love her shoes. So I'll probably just do what she does. Um, she cuts down the sides a little bit, not too much. I don't like that super cut down yeah, on the well, side. Like when it's like a yeah. total shoe. I mean, they're pretty, they're, they're sort of cut down, not a lot. She does the wing block. Um, and then I end up three quartering the shank. Okay. Um, but the other thing like that I do that, that I wear Dr. Scholl's in the heels. Nice. So you don't <laughs> take the back down. You just No, I take, what I do is I end up, you can end up inserting this in there. Oh. Because I've got disappearing heels anyway. That's so brilliant. this is like my little tip, especially if you do have Achilles problems and it fits right in there. And it, yeah. That is brilliant. I haven't actually seen that before, but it's like a really nice insert. Yeah, and, and I don't have to do, and it, the, the shank itself keeps it down. Uh-huh. So it's, yeah. Super easy. So how quickly do you go through the wing blocks then? Um, I, I mean, I really switched over to these for Don Q, and Mercedes is not a lot of stuff. She, she does a couple of worries, but that's it. I was probably going through, I would alternate pairs. So two pairs would last me maybe a week and a half, two weeks. Um, the wing block really helps you. Plus, I also glue them before I wear them. Do you glue the box? I glue, I glue inside in the tip, um, and then on the outside, whatever, like, so this is the left shoe. I glue on the outside of the left shoe because I need the support on the outside of my foot for whatever reason. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I go, I obviously go towards the big toe, so I need the extra support on the outside, but yeah. I do glue them before I wear them. Yeah, so you really, most of the hardness is like down in the the mm -hmm. lower quarter. I don't need any any support in the upper half. Yeah, so. it's like so. Um, so you glue more on the outside than on the inside. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Uh, yeah. I've seen one other dance actually. Beck Ann does that. Does she? Yeah. 
So she yeah. was like more on the outside on the inside. So if you sickle or like if you do anything funky or you, even if you bevel or something, like you can almost make a left and a right like that. Exactly. So a lot of people, even when they're just wearing stock shoes and they're not three quartering or whatever, and they just need to jack glue the shank. Like I suggest that a lot if they're like really tilting towards one side, the side or the other. Yeah. I, you know, have you ever seen dancers do like the Frankenstein fabric? I have. I tried that once too. My problem is it never stays. Oh, like it always pops off. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, you're pretty hard on your shoes then. I do. I do. I mean, I, we, you know, especially with balancing technique, we pound it into the ground. I mean, it's just constant. So, um, I did with like where you sew and then you pull and then you do. Yeah, that works great. I think it's, it helps a lot. You can't cut down your shoes. Yeah. Cause it's very pretty on mm -hmm. stage when you like sew it down on one side more than the other. It also helps with the twisting slight uh, sickling. So yeah. a lot of like little fabric things. You know those dancers that are like really particular with their point shoes and they have to have it like absolutely perfect and it takes them like 30 minutes. Like yeah. So like I love it when I get these dancers because they've experimented so much. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like they know everything about everything and every little thing like counts and like makes a difference. So I had these twins in Milwaukee Ballet that I was doing a point shoe hack with. And one of the dancers there, she's like extremely particular. The other one wasn't as much, but hmm. she, was like, she taught me that thing where like if you sew it down a little bit, it like helped with the twisting and everything. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. I didn't, because I knew it helps with the extra fabric, but I didn't know it helped with twisting. Yeah, because it like it pulls the fabric just a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. So like, it depends on like how your foot is skewed too. Like yeah. everyone's asymmetrical and everything. Okay, yeah. so you just three quarter shank. I love the Dr. Scholl's hack. I'm telling you, it has saved my life because what it also does, um, it helps t with your technique because it keeps your the weight out of your heels. Because if you have that, it sort of pushes you just slightly to the ball of your foot, mm -hmm. and. It, I don't know, it just has started really helping me. I crisscross elastic, so you, can, you can't really see, but yeah. I don't know, it, it really helps, especially with me, I have very hyperextended legs. Mm -hmm. So I tend to get in the back of my heels anyway. So this sort of just slightly pushes me on the balls of my feet without, you know, and if I do lock back into my knees, it protects my heels and things, so. Yeah, that is amazing because yeah. a, a lot of dancers, when they first go on point, like when mm -hmm. you get your first pair of point shoes, you know how mm -hmm. like the shank doesn't quite all the way go back to your the end of your heel? Mm -hmm. So they always say like, this feels so strange. Like yes. I feel like it, the shoe's not big enough or whatever, but if you have that, then it helps them push. The Absolutely, way. yeah. And I the other thing you have to be careful though, if you are gonna do this, you have to compensate for the size like if you're you know if you're I hesitate telling young dancers to do this because they need to kind of feel the shoe as is but if you're gonna wear these make sure you take them to the you know you got to compensate because it, it takes up room in the shoe definitely so you got to make sure you take that into account but yeah for me I have the disappearing heel anyway so my heels are always big so yeah that's fine I mean, I, I don't think there's like quite a shoe. Maybe, were you in the block, like the stretch satin one? Yes. Okay, so besides yes. that satin, there's not no other shoe that really like shrinks with your foot. Mm -mm. So anyone that has like the disappearing heel, it's an issue anyway when they go up on point. So that's actually really, really good. I didn't even think about that. So yeah. did you suffer from tendonitis when you were in New York too, or is this like a new development that you... A little bit. It was more FHL tendonitis when I was in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I think because I was actually in too narrow of shoes when I was there because they love that long, narrow, you know, I was in a no X and I need to double. Mm -hmm. So I was really straining the FHL and mm -hmm. in the inside of my foot. Um, but recently it's been Achilles and it's actually better since I switched to the Freeds, maybe because they're more pliable and all of that crazy balancing stuff in a harder shoe just wasn't possible and was putting pressure on my Achilles. I need a higher profile for me. Anything that's too flat pushes me back. Yeah. And yeah. that's another thing too. A lot of people think that like, oh, I'm not getting over my shoes. And it's like, it's because like, they think it's because of the shank is too hard, mm -hmm. but it's just like the box shape. Right. Like, it needs to be a little bit higher or lower. If you got a custom on your freed, would mm -hmm. you do anything differently? I don't know. I mean, I would play into, my biggest thing is the fabric on the side in terms of custom. 
because sometimes I, I do need to cut down just not too much. So that is what I always played with the most. Um, I would definitely still do the wing block. Um, but other than that, I kind of pretty much like stock shoes. Like I, if I, I find if I doctor them too much, they end up looking weird. Yeah. So I just kind of don't do too much to them. Do you, so. do you like cutting your own shank or like if they can just do that for you, would you rather them do that? I, I don't know because I like cutting my own shank because I like keeping this part whole. Yeah. It's just this, this part that I end up cutting. Oh, so um, you actually cut it really low. I cut it low where the seam is. Uh-huh. Where the seam is is where I cut this part. But then uh -huh. the, this particular piece of cardboard or whatever it is, I keep that whole. Yeah. So it looks like this. So, so you leave it that way. Mm -hmm. You don't tape it down or anything? I try, I mean, I try and pull the, the fabric back. But the reason I'm able to do that without much pain is because these fit right in. Yeah. And it ends up being the cushion that I need for that. It doesn't, it doesn't actually bug me. I don't know why. So, so you, yeah. because you just insert it in there, you just keep reusing the, the mm -hmm. doctor holes. I wash them and I can keep reusing them. Yep. That's so great. Yep. Okay. So, so. you just wear your ouch pouches. Do you break the box before you glue them? A little bit. I like to just step on the top. Uh -huh. I try and keep this because I glue this. Um, that's maybe what I would also do for a custom. I would add extra paste in the tip because mm -hmm. my tips tend to go first more than yeah. anything else um, towards the big toe. That is what I kill first. So I probably do more glue in the tip. Um, and then I just step on them a little bit, a little bit of bend. I really don't like to hack and pull. And I just, I don't know, a little bit of, little bit of bend, a little bit of step glue and I'm good. Yeah. So. And then when you were in New York, were you also wearing wing blocks or were you wearing something else? I think I went back and forth. Um, at one point I was, and then I stopped because they were hurting me. Uh -huh. um, I think too, maybe because when I was, I was way fear when I was there and I didn't need the extra support. Now I'm obviously more muscular and a little bit heavier. And so I need the extra support and tip. But um, I remember at one point wearing them and not liking it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, and now I like it. So I don't know. And I feel like you keep changing too. It's like you wear. I have never clothing. found something that I'm like, huh? Ah, like it's, it's constantly, I have always been working on it. Like yeah. I'm not one of those dancers that, oh, this is my shoe and I'm good. Like it's never been glorious. <laughs> so, <laughs> Plus I have two different size feet too. So that gets a little weird. How big um, is the difference? It's a width difference on each foot. Um, I still wear the double and freed. I wear the double on both feet. It's fine. So, so do you sink in your narrower foot? If mm -hmm. you, which mm -hmm. one? The left foot, the left foot's narrower, but my left foot's also better. So the right foot, cause I sprained my right ankle three times while I was in New York and it's never quite been the same. And it's a, it's a little more swollen constantly because of that, the extra scar tissue. So I think that's why it's wider. Um, and it's just not as flexible. So my right foot gives me, gives me issues. So. Okay. So you must break your left shoe a lot faster. In yes. The time. Oh yes. So maybe if you were to do a custom, you can just do, um, maybe even like a line. Have you ever heard of a box liner? Mm -mm. Okay. I'll show you. Oh, this is like a liner that you can put on the inside and it doesn't make like a Half. So this is the big one. This is called the wings. Oh, okay. This. I feel like I've seen this. There's a smaller version of this, and I think that's all you need. It's just called mm -hmm. the box liner. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you just put it and just put it on your left left side. You just like insert it inside your shoe like this. Mm -hmm. Oh. And wow. You, okay. So you can just cut it too. So I I would just get the bigger one like this, and then mm -hmm. experiment to see it like how much you need. Yeah. Um, and then just put that on the left. That way you don't have to get two different sizes because even if you got two different widths, it probably wouldn't fit you anyway. It's not like right. you're going to do 2X and a 1X because that's way too big of a difference. Totally. So just put that one guy in on your left foot and it'll actually, it might actually um, make your shoes die at a similar rate. That's nice because <laughs> yeah. that's my problem is that the left one will go and the right one's fine. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah, so try that one, especially if it's like a width difference, because like you have two things going on for you that's like not great. It's like it's narrower and it's more flexible. Mm -hmm. So it's like definitely dying too quickly. So yeah. your custom would be like 
like glue more on the left, obviously, mm -hmm. and then insert, and then, yeah. Yeah, thank you, that's, that's awesome, because that is literally what my problem is. The left di dies, it's a much better foot, and it's narrower. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like, yeah. Exactly, there's no custom that somebody can do for you that will actually fix that problem. Right. Oh yeah. Too much in the other direction, so like, this is like a great little thing that you can add on. Um, but yeah, do you use like jet glue? Like what do you I use? use jet glue? Yeah. Oh, yeah. easy. Yeah. So yeah. jet glue more and then add the, the liner and then I'll send it to you. Like you guys are like in Salt Lake City. It'll get to you. And like, perfect. Salt Lake City was my last studio fitting or ballet. What was my last? I saw fitting. some of them. They're so good. Yeah. Oh, they're so, the kids are great too. I like, know. They're so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was my last one, but then it was like, it was okay because Utah was like, it didn't have any cases confirmed mm -hmm. at that time. And then like, you know, and then yeah. obviously that was my last one and then everything got canceled. Right. Yeah. But right. I, I love Salt Lake City. It's so It's cool. beautiful here. It's yeah. It's beautiful here. And like Valley West is honestly like, it's one of my favorite companies to work with because everyone is so nice mm -hmm. and I think dancers with like really flexible feet that don't have um a lot of strength they have some issues with like the three-quarter yeah like they don't have that stability like how did you um overcome that or were you always really strong even though you're super flexible I kind of I I've always had been really strong like I am the person that always breaks my boxes my shanks never break I've never snapped a shank I've never broken a shank like that's just not how my feet are and I think it's because my heel tucks in so that was all that shank was almost getting in my way too and so I just was like I don't need it so I took it out and I it feels I can almost get over more and I feel more in control of my shoe than fighting the top part of the shank which I didn't yeah. ever need anyway so, so it was tri it was trial and error it was trial and error so even when you were training, you were like that? Where like you wouldn't? No, I think I wore normal, normal shoes at SAB and training. And then I would think it was Ashley Bowder actually, who mentioned to me because I was clueless, and she's like, you know, you can cut that off. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, thanks, Ashley. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, I can't remember what ballet it was. It might have been for like Juliet early on, and she's wow. like, I noticed something weird in your. You can cut that, and I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> So, yeah. When you yeah. cut it, does it last longer, you think? I think so. I feel like, because then the, you're not fighting it. I don't, I don't know. This only works with people that have strong feet. Mm -hmm. So like the three quarters, some people say that it doesn't last as long. And some people say that it lasts a lot longer. But yeah. it's usually the people who are very strong that makes mm -hmm. it last longer. Because like, if you look at the shank, you can either snap it and mm -hmm. it breaks off and then it won't last very long or because it has that like bend with the three quarter. So like you have like a heel, like a shelf to sit on. Right. Top. Exactly. And I think maybe that's what it is. So yeah. Yeah. Know. And you cut it so low. It's like, you're really, if it's a seam, it's I cut it the same or half. I guess it's more than, it's more like a half. Yeah. So you, you're really like, it's called three quartering, but you're really half shanking it. Yeah. 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 I mean, not th this thing. I don't know what, you know, that's three quarter and this is half. So yeah. it's like, I think dancers love like customizing their own shoes because mm -hmm. like how do you ask for that like see you... that's the thing like I wouldn't want to like ruin a pair asking for it and then have it come and be wrong so well thank you so much this was really thank helpful you. and like yeah. this is a hack that I haven't heard before that the Dr. Scholl Dr. Scholl's <laughs> yeah so good because yeah. so actually if there are any guys watching this I know some male ballet dancers uh -huh. that wear it in their ballet shoes I think Joaquin Deleuze used to I think Seth Orza does like they they wear these in their ballet shoes and it helps with their jumps and their knees oh my gosh so, that's so huge yeah so that's a really good one yeah okay I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket and I'm gonna send you the box liner so you can try it on your left foot thank you that'd be awesome yeah. <laughs> like unless you're I'm, I'm also curious like how your feet are going to change through this quarantine because you're mm -hmm. not, you don't have like your natural like every day pounding in the floor yeah I mean I just did my Achilles pain is gone, um, but I just filmed two point classes and that was interesting. I saw that. Uh, <laughs> so, and it was fine. Surprisingly, like I haven't really done point work in like three or four weeks and it was fine. So I'm trying to like put them on and do things, even if yeah. it's not, you know, cause you don't want to start over with the calluses either. Oh yeah. So sure. that, oh, gosh, that's the that was my hardest thing actually coming back with my nine years gap was the calluses on my feet were gone. Like your skin is so fair. <laughs> yeah. And like, it, it skin's like a big thing with point shoes. Yeah, yeah. 
it's like I look at like skin and some people have like a really, really tough time on point because of skin sensitivity. Yep. And you look like you're, you're like Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I get that a lot. Um, I get that a lot. But no, it's so true. My skin is so sensitive. Like even normal shoes, I have to like wear them with socks when I first get a pair of normal shoes because my skin will just, I just get blisters all the time. Yeah. So it was building that back up that was a nightmare. Yeah. It really was. It's sometimes worse than having like tendon issues or something because like, yeah. the pain is so constant all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And it, there's nothing you can do. There's only so, you know, if you put too many layers of padding on it, then it's worse because of the friction. So exactly. I know it's tough. Like whenever I see skin like that walking, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. No, for me, what I do though, this is another tip. I use aura gel, which is like gum numbing stuff you can buy at the drugstore. Yes. And I that one too. if you can put it in your mouth, you can put it on a wound so it will numb your blisters and I've gotten through many a performance with I could not have done it without that I could imagine yeah and like, I mean like especially when you're growing up in like a pretty prestigious ballet school or whatever mm -hmm. a lot of people you feel like you're like being too sensitive like how come I'm the only person that's like right. in so much pain but it really is like a skin sensitivity thing yeah so it's like a lot of people have it worse than others yeah Perfect. I'm so happy for everything Thank that's you. happening and all of your YouTube videos. I'm so happy we Thank got you. together. I know. I'd love to have you on my channel at some point. We should do that. that. Yeah, we'll let's do, do it. Okay. <laughs> we'll chat more point shoots and everything. That would be awesome. <laughs> they would love it. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.